Where is ESPN's college game day going for week number 10? For week nine, I whiffed. I I don't know why I didn't think that Utah would be able to beat USC. I mean, that's just that I whiffed on that, and I knew it way after I recorded this. Uh, but yeah, I, I should have put that one on the list, and I sure didn't. But for week number 10, LSU and Alabama both have buys this week, and they both only have one SEC loss. They are both ranked in the top 20. Alabama's in the top 10. LSU should probably be in, like, the top 15, if we're being honest. But, uh, yeah, that one's going to be massive in Tuscaloosa. Uh, I've got Missouri at Georgia, and I think this is probably the most likely one because they've already been to Tuscaloosa. If Georgia beats Florida, Missouri's coming off a bye. So, Missouri, only one loss on the season at home to LSU, last-minute fashion. Uh, Yeah, and Missouri's built to where they could actually beat Georgia. So that's something to pay attention to. Uh, Kansas State at Texas. Okay, maybe not as uh, maybe not as huge a game. Kansas State already got two losses. Texas has the one loss to Oklahoma. Might be without Quinn Ewers. Eh, we'll see. Uh, I put UCLA at Arizona on here as, as a potential spot. If Arizona wins again, if UCLA beats Colorado this week, that could be enticing because they have not been there in a very long time. But uh, either way, it, it's tough for them to get out to these uh, West Coast games, especially back-to-back weeks. James Madison at Georgia State. Okay. If James Madison beats Old Dominion. There we go. <laughs> I blanked for a minute. <laughs> if James Madison beats Old Dominion and Georgia State beats Georgia Southern, you have got a an undefeated team against a one-loss team in the Sun Belt. And while there's not a ton of stakes on it because James Madison can't win the Sun Belt this year for whatever goofy NCAA reason, uh, that's still going to be a huge game. And that would be interesting for, you know, I I think for uh, ESPN and College Game Day to go to Atlanta, you would have a really hyped-up Georgia State fan base. That could be a lot of fun. That could be a lot of fun. And then finally... And this one might just be for sentimental reasons, but there's also the fact that Oklahoma might be undefeated. Obviously, Oklahoma would have to beat uh, Kansas. Oklahoma State would have to beat Cincinnati this week. But the last the last iteration of college game day, or not college, excuse me, the last iteration of Bedlam as we know it is going on in Week 10. It's in Stillwater. You know that tensions are going to be high. You know it's going to be insane. ESPN still would own the rights to both teams, or some of the rights to both teams, even after this. But this will be the last time that they play for quite some time. So, do they want to go to Bedlam just for the rivalry sake of it? How how big are the ratings for Bedlam each year? Is it one of those kind of rivalries that that really moves the needle? Probably not. But... Man, that's going to be a massive game. If Oklahoma State comes in there with only two losses and only one of them in the uh, in the Big 12, yeah, that's a, that's a big spot. That's a big spot. So, uh, I think they're probably going to go to Athens next week because they did not go to Jacksonville this week. But we shall see. It all depends on what happens with Georgia-Florida. Uh, if it's not Georgia, I would imagine they'll probably make a return trip to Tuscaloosa. We shall see. We shall see. James Madison, Georgia State, still a really good idea. And then uh, Bedlam, also a really good idea. So we'll, we'll see what they end up doing. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.